Hi all. Uh, so this webinar is regarding the recent changes that have been brought in in the private placement norms, and uh, there has been a massive change uh, wherein the entire uh, rules and the structures have got changed, and this is really going to impact uh, the small medium enterprises and the startups as well. Uh, so we thought that this webinar would really help uh, these small medium enterprises and the startups to understand what they should do while raising funds and what not to do. Uh, so we'll uh, so I'll start with the I'll just start with by setting the tone like what is private placement so that everyone is on the same page and we can try to understand it in a better manner. So private placement is a procedure of raising funds from investors. So fundraising is a common process. Uh, today we see a lot of companies are raising funds and the method of raising funds is basically two way. So one, they can either raise the funds by following the method of right issue. Number two is by following the method known as private placement. So in this webinar, we will mainly focus on the private placement and the changes that have been brought in in the private placement norms. So the four key takeaways. So what are we trying to understand from this webinar? So number one, determination of an offer as private placement. So how will we understand that the particular offer is the offer for private placement? That is number one. Number two, the key changes that have been brought in in the private placement rules. Number three is the penalty for non-compliances. So if you are not so been brought in, the changes that have been brought in, so what are the penalty for non-compliances in such cases? And how do you ensure proper compliance? So let's start from here. So the first thing is determination of an offer is private placement. So as we are mainly focusing on startups and small medium enterprises, so let us first understand like how it goes. How do we really determine if the offer is a private placement offer? So you need to see whether the company is a private company or a public company. So if it is a private company, now you understand whether the issue that is the way of raising funds. So as we said, this either this will be a right issue or this will be a private placement. The other one is bonus issue, which is something different. But you ask a question, which is, is it a right issue or a bonus issue? So if it is a right issue or a bonus issue, then the question of private placement doesn't come. But if it is not a right issue and not a bonus issue and if it, the offer is not to more than 200 percent, then this is a private placement. But what if the investors are less than 200? If the offer Sorry for the interruption. Uh, so if the offer is made to a selected group of persons and if it is less, if it, if, and if the offer is made to less people, investors less than 200, then this shall be treated as a private placement offer. More so ever, this offer should be in compliance with section 42 of the Companies Act 2013. The other question can be, what if the offer is to selected investors. That is, uh, you have selected the people, selected the number of investors, and it is less than 200, but it is not in compliance with Section 42 of the Companies Act. What in such case? 
if it is not in compliance with section 42 of the companies act 2013 then this shall be treated as a deemed public offer and this shall not be a private placement coming to the key changes in private placement rules so what are the major changes that have been brought in so we'll go one by one in this case so the first one is a company shall not be allowed to issue securities if any prior issue is pending with respect to earlier private placement offer so it might happen that a company has already decided to raise funds through private placement now a, a process has been going on or a process has been started sometime back now the process has not been completed yet so if the private placement offer and in, if the process has not been completed yet the company shall not be allowed to come up with a new offer new private placement offer so how should the company go if a company has already an open offer for private placement with the, for which the compliances are still pending it is, the first thing that the company should do is finish up all the compliances which were, which are pending and then proceed with the next private placement offer otherwise this shall be treated as a non compliance the second one is there are various instances when the the equity shares or any other kind of securities are being issued for consideration other than cash so if the securities are issued for consideration other than cash this has to be justified by a proper valuation report now what is really let us try consideration other than cash so uh, consider a situation <coughs> consider a situation when you have an advisor to the board there is an advisor who is in the board and the in the pool of investors that person is an advisor he might be a lead investor so that person might ask for equity or any other kind of securities for consideration other than cash wherein he would not pay any cash directly to the company and he would just give his advices and in view of the advices the company would give him some securities equity or whatever it is so in that case that has to be his advice the value of his advice or whatever the whatever whatever consideration that he is giving the, that should be justified by a proper valuation report and the method the justification should be stated in the offer letter the offer letter which is issued in the case of private placement offer so that is the private placement offer letter should state what are the, what are the things and how 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 the valuation report has been uh prepared and you have to justify that properly the third thing this is a very important point so earlier in case of private placement offer there was a minimum investment size of 20000 rupees in face value of securities which was required now this has been withdrawn under the new provisions so earlier there was a law wherein they would say that if an investor is coming to invest now this the face value of the securities should not be le less than 20000 else the investor won't be allowed to invest now this requirement has been withdrawn and this is a very good change uh, because what happens in startup industry and all they raise funds very frequently and they need funds and it is not really um feasible that they, someone would be really investing a uh, minimum of 20000 rupees and that too in face value because they have got valuations as well so the premium won't be counted in here so it is important that uh, so so this is a major change that the the this 20000 in face value has been withdrawn the the fourth point is the private placement offer letter which shall be prepared this should be explanatory in nature so earlier pass for offer letter that is the private placement offer letter which is also called uh, ps4 offer letter so there were some details and information which were to be included in pass for offer letter 
Now the law states that this offer letter should be explanatory in nature, wherein various other information shall be included. So uh, one can be uh, one 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 important change is like if there is a default in annual filing in any of the years, you need to state it in the pass for offer letter. Uh, the pass for offer letter shall also state shall also state what is the pre shareholding and uh, so pre issue shareholding and the post issue shareholding. So before offering for private placement offer, so before offering the private placement, what is the shareholding pattern? And after the private placement offer, what is the shareholding pattern? So both the things has to be stated. What are the changes that are coming in due to this offer? So there might be some changes in the board. There might be some changes in the uh, so so if the, if the articles are entrenched or uh, if some if the if the metal rights then these are some changes that are going to definitely come in. So these things have to be again stated in the private placement offer letter. The number of persons to whom it has been offered. Uh, the other thing is if you if there are any pending litigations or any court cases which are pending against the company or the directors, this has to be again uh, mentioned in the private placement offer letter. If so how many private placement offers have been issued in the last one year? So that too has that too also needs to be mentioned in the PS4 offer letter. So uh, you are issuing the offer letter now, uh, and uh, sometime around six months back you might have issued a, uh, you might have issued securities to private placement to some uh, to some investors, which has already been completed. But still you have to mention like so last for the last one year, what are the private placement uh, offers that were being made by the company? Then the other point that uh, I just spoke on the valuation report, the justification of valuation report uh, in case of consideration other than cash. This is an, another thing that has to be mentioned. Uh, the validity of the offer letter. So an offer letter shall remain open for minimum 15 days, maximum of 30 days, but that has to be stated clearly in the offer letter. What is the minimum period? What is the maximum period? And how long the offer will remain valid? So these things are very important and has to be stated clearly in the offer letter. So all in all this private placement offer letter or PS4 offer letter shall be detailed and explanatory. The fifth point is, uh, so in any case when the private placement offer is being issued, uh, there is a general meeting being called before issuing the offers. So the, in the general meeting, the shareholders pass resolution and then the approve if the company can go ahead with the issuance of securities to private placement. So in that general meeting when the notices are being sent to the shareholders for calling the meeting an explanatory statement is being attached to the notice of the meeting. This explanatory statement earlier used to be a normal explanatory statement wherein some basic details is to be featured and is to be sent to the shareholders. Now it says that the explanatory statement should be more explanatory in nature and all the details which forms part of PS4 that is the private placement offer letter this shall also form part of the explanatory statement. So in detail the explanatory statement shall be a very big one which shall be uh, which shall include the normal basic uh, explanatory statement along with the PS4 offer letter. So the entire offer letter, the details of the offer letter shall also form part of this explanatory statement which shall make this explanatory statement a, a detailed one. The sixth major point is on the valuation. So valuation, so in any case when a company issues a security to an investor when the securities are issued to the investors the valuation is a common practice so uh, we we arrive the companies arrive <coughs> i'm sorry so the companies arrive at a valuation of of the security so there shall be the face value and there shall be the premium now this valuation report shall be prepared at least 30 days prior to the date of general meeting. So general meeting is the meeting of the shareholders which is being called. So how is it really done? So the board has to first decide. So that's the common practice. The board usually decides uh, that the company needs certain amount of funds which are to be raised from the investors. 
and on the basis of that they call for general meeting where they need to seek the approval of the shareholders now before they call the general meeting and once the board meeting is being held what they need to do is the board members need to finalize the valuation and this valuation shall be done by a registered valuer so once the valuation report is being done and that valuation report is being prepared so after 30 days you can call the general meeting it cannot be so that the valuation report is done today and the general meeting is called after 15 days because the changes has been made and the change says that the valuation shall be done at least 30 days prior to the date of general meeting and this particular date shall be also mention in the offer letter which shall be named as the relevant date so relevant date shall be shall mean the date on which the valuation report has been prepared so all these parts like the valuation the ps4 offer letter in detail and everything this shall again form part of the explanatory statement which shall form part of the notice calling the general meeting the other important point is uh, so in the offer letter when the offer letter is being issued <coughs> you need to state the mode of payment for subscription so it should be clearly stated in the offer letter what should be the mode of payment so in private placement in any case this should be a bank transfer so cash transaction is not allowed in case of private placement So, but what you need to do is the offer letter when it is prepared the company should prepare the offer letter in such a way that that mode of payment of the subscription amount should be stated so you can say that the amount should be transferred through nfc to this account so you can give the account details and how is it going to be transferred so the mode of payment has to be stated in the offer letter now again this part of the offer letter again forms part of the explanatory statement as i spoke earlier <coughs> this point as i earlier mentioned the offer letter should also mention the pre issue shareholding and post issue shareholding pattern so pre issue shareholding is <coughs> pre issue shareholding is uh before issuance of securities to private placement there is a particular shareholding pattern and after is issuance of uh, securities to private placement offer there is a particular shareholding pattern so both the shareholding pattern should be stated in the ps4 offer letter now this point is a very very important one so offer letter shall not be issued unless form mgt 14 is filed so form mgt 14 was usually filed for uh, usually filed for passing the resolution so once the resolution was passed by the members in the meeting uh, the resolution is to be filed with the registrar of companies in form mgt 14 wherein the resolution of the members along with the explanatory statement were to be uh, was filed in the mgt 14 but now the recent change has been that the offer letter shall not be issued so once the resolution has been passed you need to file mgt 14 first and then you can only issue the offer letter to the investors so this is a major change so how this is really going to impact the company passes the, the members of the company pass a resolution pass a special resolution for issuance of securities to private placement after passing the resolution you have a period of 30 days as per the law to file mgt 14 in the resolution itself and in the explanatory statement you would really state that what is the date of opening of the offer and what is the date of closing the offer so the offer might open after 7 days from the date of meeting so you need to make sure even though you have a time of 30 days to file mgt 14 from the date of passing of resolution but you will not be able to issue offer letter unless the mgt 14 is filed so technically you will have 7 days from the date of passing of resolution to file mgt 14 and then issue the offer letter so this is a very very big change which is going to really affect that unless they really pay attention to this thing 
So once the resolution is signed, file MGT 14 first and then issue the offer letter. So entire things have to, have to be planned very well and this has to be executed very well. The other important change is, as I uh, said right now, that the form MGT 14 used to attach resolution passed in the general meeting along with the explanatory statement. Now the changes have been brought in and the change says that the MGT 14 uh, along with the shareholders resolution and explanatory statement, this shall also attach the resolution passed by the board members. So this is an additional attachment that is being put in by the ministry and they have said that this, the, 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 so, so apart from these two documents, the explanatory statement, the resolution passed by the general, by the members in the general meeting, you should also attach the resolution passed by the members of the board. Another important change is, so earlier form GNL2 used to be filed for filing private placement offer letter and the information memorandum which was usually kept by the company as a company records. So the information memorandum is PS5 and the offer letter is PS4. So PS4 and PS5 used to be filed in form GNL2 earlier. Now, uh, the, the, the ministry has given, has, give, uh, has come up with a waiver wherein they say that form GNL2 is not required anymore. So it is not mandatory now. So if, if a company wishes to file GNL2, you can always do so. This, this shall be an additional compliance, but this is not required to be done anymore. You can skip filing GNL2. But yes, now, and this is the reason that uh, the ministry has asked that you, the, um, the explanatory statement, which shall form part of MGT 14, should also mention all the details of the offer letter. So earlier that was not required, as the offer letter used to form part of <coughs> GNL2. Now as the GNL2 is not required anymore, so the ministry has asked that you file MGT14 wherein the, all the details of the offer letter shall also be attached. A very very important thing has been brought in in this thing, uh, in the entire changes that has been uh, announced. So after the earlier the law was, when the money is received, from all the investors by the company, the company had to file return of allotment. That is form pass 3 within 15 days, within 30 days from the date of the allotment. So that you cannot utilize the money until and unless you have allotted the securities to the investors. And the, the law was that you could file pass 3, that is the form for return of allotment within 30 days from the date of allotment. So pass 3 is a form which is the return of allotment. And the date of allotment is a different thing. So date of allotment is the date when the board meets, when the board meeting is being held and the securities are being allotted to the investors. And the form pass 3 return of allotment is the return wherein wherein the details are being inserted in the form and it has been intimated to the ministry that such number of securities are being allowed to these number of investors and so and so investors with the details. So earlier the law was that you need to file form pass 3 within 30 days from the date of allotment that is from the date of board meeting. Now the law has changed and they say that you need to file pass 3 within 15 days from the date of allotment. And the point to be noted here is, you cannot utilize the money unless the form pass 3 is filed. So, it might happen that the board meeting has been held and you have allotted the securities to the investors who were finalized in the offer letter. So, the securities have been, say, consider the securities have, are being allotted today in the board meeting. And you might think that as the securities have, has, have already been allotted, you can start utilizing the money from tomorrow. But the law says, the changes that have come in, they say that even though the allotment has been done by the board, but you cannot utilize the money unless you find form, uh, file form pass 3. So if you file form pass 3, 3 days later from today, 
So you cannot utilize the money for three, these three days. So first complete the filing of pass, uh, form pass 3 and then utilize the money. The lenient view here it can be you file pass, you can either you hold the board meeting today and utilize the money but you need to make sure that the pass 3 is being filed within 15 days. So this is a lenient view but to be on a safer side is it is always advisable that even though after the date of allotment that is after the date of board meeting you form you file form pass 3 first and then utilize the money so that you can avoid any kind of complications for the company as well as the company directors and the promoters. Coming to the penalty. So what are the penalty for non-compliances? So I spoke about various compliances which uh, which are to be looked into uh, which needs to be done at various stages uh, before receiving the money after receiving the money uh, while holding meetings uh, while filing of forms now what happens if there is non-compliance so who shall be liable the promoters the directors and the company so these three parties shall be liable in case of non-compliance and what is the penalty amount? So the amount, so, so the penalty amount shall be amount raised to private placement or rupees two crore, whichever is lower. Now <coughs> you might have raised an amount of rupees fifty lakhs from the investors, and there had been some kind of non-compliance in terms of section forty-two of the private placement of securities of companies at twenty thirteen. So if there is a non-compliance and you, you have raised an amount of 50 lakhs, so in that case the penalty amount would be 50 lakhs. But if you have raised an amount of 5, five crores, then the penalty amount would be 2 crores because 2 crores is the lower one. So the penalty amount would be rupees 2 crores. But this, this is important to note that the promoters, the directors and the company all of the all the parties shall be equally liable in payment of penalty what happens in case the company uh, uh, fails to comply with filing of form pass 3 so i talked about filing, uh, filing of pa form pass 3 which is for return of allotment which should be done within 15 days from the date of allotment so in this case as well the parties liable are the promoters the directors and the company and the penalty amount shall be rupees 1000 per day up to rupees 25 lakhs 25 lakhs uh, cap but it should it shall be it shall keep on increasing at a rate of rupees 1000 per day which can be a huge amount uh, if the if the penalty if the if the non compliance continues so to be on a safer side this is important that all the compliances are being done properly at a proper time and all the documentations are made as per the act and as per the changes that have been brought in. <clears throat> How do you really ensure these compliances? So the first part is the documentation. This is very important because if there is a scrutiny or if there are any kind of non-compliances and if there are any kind of uh, queries being raised by the ministry, so what needs to be proper is you need to make all the documentations clear that all the documents are to be drafted properly so that you have <coughs> you can prove your points wherein you can say that all the documents have been drafted in this this manner and as per the law as per the act and accordingly the filings have been done. So the first part that needs to be done to ensure proper compliance is ensure that all the documents are drafted properly and there should not be any kind of mismatch or there should not be any kind of information missing. <coughs> the second part is the compliance. So once the documents are being prepared, you need to ensure that the compliances are in place. So how do you ensure compliances like uh, you need to file MGT 14. Uh, you need to uh, you, you need to you need to uh, attach the right the right documents to the form MGT 14. Uh, you need to mention what is the proper mode of receiving the money from the investors. Uh, these things have to be again mentioned in the form MGT 14 in the resolution. The resolutions have to be first passed properly. Uh, 
the the the, the uh, when the offers are being issued so uh, the, the other point that i mentioned earlier so mgt potential be filed before uh, issuing the offer letter so all these things the compliance part should be done should be checked properly and should be complied properly <clears throat> so that you can avoid any kind of complications and penalties so the first one was documentation second one is the compliance and the third one is the consultant so considering the nitty gritties the considering the complexities of the law this is this is very important that you always seek help of a consultant so the consultant who is really expert in understanding and guiding you through the process so what happens <coughs> a company decides to raise funds from the investors so once the company decides to raise funds from the investors they talk with the investors they sign the term sheet and then they call for the money from the investors so once the money comes in usually what happens the promoters the founders they go to the consultant and they say that i have uh, signed a term sheet with the with my investors and i have already received uh, a particular sum of money and i need to issue equity to the particular shareholders and the investors now now here the problem crops up so why because there are various compliances which needs to be first done before receiving the money the offer letters have to be circulated the forms have to be filed and then when the money comes in the money should come in between the offer period and then when the money comes in you need to hold board meeting you need to form file form pass 3 and then you can utilize the money and then there are various other requirements in private placement law which says that you need to have a different bank account where you should receive the investment amount so you cannot receive the amount in your normal bank account where you are carrying on with the day to day business operating transaction that the bank account needs to be a different bank account where we, where you will receive this particular investment amount which will which will be treated as an escrow account so it is advisable that you always seek help of a consultant who is an expert in this domain who can really he help you in uh, in going through the process and complying with law at each and every step so documentation compliances and these two are being complemented by a consultant so do hire a proper consultant and ensure that you are complied at every point of law to avoid any complications to avoid any complexities to avoid penalties and uh, other, other other penal measures so uh, the the queries that we received uh, on private placement and uh, there has been various changes we understood that uh, this is very important because the founders have uh, uh the 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 reason i mean the trend has been that uh the founders receive the money first and uh, then the compliance is to be done at a back date uh paying some kind of penalty or uh and then or even though if, even though the penalty was were not being paid in terms of additional fees and all but uh now the changes has been a little bit different wherein they say that you need to file the forms before uh to to really show that you have complied with the law so filing of forms have been brought in sync with the compliances so this is a major change and uh, this thing has to be looked into very uh, very well uh before you really discuss so you so once you will finalize uh, discussing with the investors on receiving the money it should be made uh, you should immediately seek help of a consultant and then go ahead with the further procedures so that uh, you are not being penalized at a later stage so uh, we tried to answer almost all the questions and to uh, clear the doubts on whatever the changes have been brought in and also to make sure that you are complied on everything however if you have any other queries <coughs> you can reach us at info@taxmantra.com uh, we will reply you on that thank you